obviously we are interested in kidneys, but we are also interested to see what's happening uh, across the different organ systems. So uh, should we think how we do this here? Do we want to stay the entire time here, so 45 minutes, or do we want to go through key topics we want to bring back to the other groups as well? I'd love to hear from some. I think you could make the case we're a little bit preaching to the choir here within this group. Uh, and uh, we already interact in a number of different fora. So it might be good to um, sort of uh, work on our messaging, if you will, and then take that back to some of the other working groups. So it might, it would seem to me that might make sense. I'm not in the kidney group per se, but we're working on kidney part of our HCA and we're working closely with Anna and now with Matthias. Yeah. I don't know the whole scope of the kidney groups. So maybe, we, I mean, and probably the other groups don't either. So that might be something to bring back to them. It's like, how many groups are there? What, how are they organized? Not in all the details, but just in the broad strokes. And we already had that on the other document quickly mentioned where, why, while we describe it. Should we quickly go through the room uh, so that everybody knows who, who is online? I think I introduced already myself. Joshua, do you want to say a few words about yourself? Sure. I'm Joshua Levin at the Broad Institute. Um, we actually have a pro project we're working on, which was from the Standards and Technology Working Group in the Human Cell Atlas. And we're trying to take all the different Asset, well, not all, but many different assays, apply them to a handful of kidney samples and see what value each one will bring and how they would be integrated. And so that brought us into contact with the kidney network. Ellen, are you on? Can you unmute yourself? Ellen, can you hear? You are, you are on mute? Okay, I scared her. I, I scared her away. Becky, do you want to say a few words who you are and your host? Uh, sure. I am scribe right now, just so folks know. I did open up the Kidney Google Doc and I'm trying to write some things. Um, but uh, my name is Becky Steck. I work at the University of Michigan with uh, Dr. Kretzler. And I am the, I, I manage the Data Visualization Center for the Kidney Precision Medicine Project, which is responsible for building the Kidney Atlas. Um, from for KPMP, and then I'm also uh, doing some work on the Human Cell Atlas Kidney Seed Network as well. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, so I'm Jonathan Himmelfarb. I'm a nephrologist, uh, director of Kidney Research Institute at the University of Washington. Uh, Matthias and I are OPIs in the uh, central hub for the Kidney Precision Medicine Project. And uh, additionally, I work in um, organs on chips and organoids field for in vitro modeling of a variety of kidney diseases. Thanks. Uh, I'm Bruce Herr. I'm from uh, uh, Indiana University for the, the HubMap project. Um, we're working on the common coordinate framework, and uh, one of the so we're creating a spatial and ontological system for registering different organs and tissues that have been extracted from those organs and kidney happened to be the first one that we focused on. Um, so I'm mostly focused on the technical side. Uh, so I'm not really familiar with all the, the guts part of it. Um, but Ellen, who also is from IU um, and a part of the project, she's, she knows the guts <laughs> as it were. Thanks Bruce. Ellen, do you want to say a few words? Sure, sorry. I uh, was trying to find a session and I kind of came in on the, on the last minute here. Uh, yeah, I am also at Indiana University. I'm um, working with Bruce and Cady Barner's group and uh, basically I'm the resident biologist in their group. So I have a fairly extensive knowledge of um, human anatomy and physiology as well as uh, what I'm working on with them currently is trying to get ontological terms uh, together for the um, exploration user interface in the CCF. So thank Thanks you so much. And Jeet? 
Yeah, um, sorry again. Uh, I think like Ellen, I just ended up here because I saw kidney, the, my most favorite organ, um, <laughs> and <laughs> it was a natural uh, reaction. Uh, I'm a transplant nephrologist. I work at the University of Michigan. Uh, I have a strong uh, a quantitative background, uh, but I'm also uh, have started to develop a biorepository of living donor tissue and uh, kidney transplants uh, using our surveillance biopsy program at the University of Michigan. So. Along with Dr. Kretzler, we have developed this large, uh, with his help, we have developed this large uh, repository. And uh, I'm interested in understanding further on how I could leverage this towards my own uh, development, as well as contribute to the broader community. Thanks, Chief. OK, so uh, what are the charge to this group? What should we do? And I like Joshua's comment that maybe we can cut a little quickly and then bring that back to the larger group, kind of the different efforts and where they integrate and where this integration uh, could be of help. And Becky, if you can enlarge your screen a little bit, and then we could read it. That would be fantastic. So Joshua, do, do, you, do you think that would be helpful also for Alan and Bruce? Yeah, it would be good. Um, just to, what, I see there's two listed. Wow, there's, you really have, uh, well, that's a lot. Okay. I, I, I start, I, I went ahead and started filling in ones I knew about, but. Um. So, so, so Joshua, do you want to give us an update of the seed network standards groups, which you are leading, which I think it's really very critical to a lot of what we will be discussing here. How can we harmonize, standardize, or at least have networks able to talk to each other with the various data sets they generate. Okay, so um, what we proposed was we were, we were going to have two, two centers collect kidney samples. It looks like one will be related, closely related to the Broad, and it looks at this point, one will be at Michigan. And what we're planning is to then process those samples with probably five or six days, um, RNA-seq for cells, RNA-seq for nuclei, attack-seq. Uh, we had another method. We have CAGE, which is five prime seq, um, which is from Piero Carnici. We have SNMT-seq, which is something from Thierry Voet, in, and it's a two or three methods combined methylation and RNA seq and and anyway there's and then the idea would be to integrate them so we have a computational part of our group too and there's um, and we would hope that whatever we learn could be applied to any tissue but we're starting with kidney and I would say right now our greatest challenge is to get permission to actually work with the samples and to share them among all the groups and that might seem like an obvious thing, but that that's where we are right now. Thanks, Joshua. Any questions for Joshua? Okay, with the kidney. Uh, these are all, uh, what, are, what are the source of tissue? Is it all from Michigan? I assume it's going to be living donor biopsies. Uh, for sort of healthy reference tissue. What from the Broad, uh, what tissues are you getting from the Broad? What kinds of tissues, kidney tissues? This is from Anna Greca, and yeah. I'm pretty sure it's from people who had a tumor and then they took the whole tissue out and then there's some normal tissue associated with that tumor. Uh, yeah. I think Matthias can tell you if that's correct or not. Yeah, that is correct. These are tumor nephrectomy specimens which are procured in the OR to minimize ischemia time. Jonathan, similar to the tissue uh, we have been using in the KPMP pilot one, and the Michigan contribution will be both. It will be also tumor nephrectomy uh, tissue. Some of the technologies Joshua mentions are quite tissue demanding. So a uh, biopsy core would not supply sufficient material. But then for some of the technologies you can make work with small amounts, it could help as well. So tumor nephrectomies and what was the other type, Matthias? Uh, Michigan is tumor nephrectomy and healthy living donors, tissue from Jeet's uh, transplant uh, article as you just mentioned. And the kidney seed um, network article is kind of linked and embedded with this group. 
uh, meaning a subset of the technologies which the standards group are using are used against kidney tissue, which is procured from uh, the Oxford group uh, and uh, from adult human kidney tumor nephrectomies, uh, from Broad and Michigan tumor nephrectomies, adult unaffected parts, and Michigan fetal human tissue, and then Michigan living donor tissue. And technologies are single cell, single nuc, uh, spatial transcriptomics under development, and spatial proteomics, as far as I recall. Okay, any questions for the human cell atlas? Otherwise we can move to HubMap. Who wants to take it from HubMap? I could tell what I know. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> and if I may, just before you do, Ellen, if you allow me to break in and forgive me interrupting everybody, it was just to say, I'm so glad you've, uh, that this looks like a really productive group. Um, hats off to Becky for uh, subscribing. Doesn't mean that you should let her do the all of the work. If you can also contribute to the Google Doc, that's great. Um, do take a break because it can be very intense and hard work and fatiguing. So we'll work through till 12.30, but if you want to take a 15 minute break within that time, my suggestion is do that. But follow through just as you did yesterday, follow through the instructions in the Google Doc. So you're generating lots of questions. What are the most interesting questions in this space before then converging and trying to work out, well, you know, what might be the areas in which we might, the consortium might overlap in order to generate solutions? If any questions, let me know. I'll be back in the, uh, the other plenary space once I've gone around the other groups. Thanks, Tommy. Sorry to okay. interrupt. Oops, sorry. Um, quick summary of the two groups that we are currently working with on kidney. Uh, one is Vanderbilt through um, Jeff Spragan's group or Richard Caprioli's group. And uh, then also we are wa working with uh, Sanjay John, who is at Wash U who actually has a larger network uh, with UCSD, who's doing a lot of single cell uh, RNA-seq methodologies. Um, Vanderbilt, on the other hand, is doing uh, imaging mass spec work and uh, has been doing lipidomics as well as metabolomics and proteomics. Uh, they're also doing um, multiplexed immunofluorescence and uh, we'll be converting over to Codex uh, instead of that uh, later on. Um, Vanderbilt also has a, uh, another um, group that they're working with for uh, looking at human variability of kidney. Uh, they've got a huge repository of CT and MRI images through the image VU or image view. Uh, and they're working with Bennett Landman there. And uh, by the time June um, data release happens, uh, they're hoping to have uh, 500 different uh, images um, processed to get a consensus uh, reference organ and have some idea of the variability of um, that many humans. So that should be um, pretty neat. And then uh, Bruce, if you want to talk about what we're doing. Yeah. 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 So um, uh, I should mention with, with the CCF, the Common Coordinate Framework, where we've registered all the tissue, uh, 25 tissues from Jeff Spragan's group, um, where they've said basically we have a reference organ and they place their tissues in that reference organ so that you can see all the different part places that have been extracted from the kidney. Um, and we are also working, we also uh, got a KPMP glue grant um, to do essentially the same thing with their uh, kidney data. And uh, yeah, so then uh, the data that came out, came out of HubMap, the data came out of KPMP, and hopefully more projects can all, can all be put into this common spatial and ontological space. And then theoretically, you can do spatial queries and ontology queries to say, find me all the kidney, all the, uh, you know, certain cell types within the kidney in this certain location. Um, 
So that's sort of what we're doing related to the kidney. Bruce, did you say you've already done 25 organs? Yes. So oh, 25 tissue pieces. 25 tissue pieces, yeah. Not organs, not yet. <laughs> I was going to say, good job, wow. <laughs> yeah, no, we wish. We're getting there, though. Kidney is sort of our prototype uh, organ where we're trying to go from beginning to end through our entire workflow so we can get it down, and then we should be able to just apply, apply all. Love to be prototyped. Always <laughs> must be the guinea pig. Here. Yeah, you picked a hard one to start with, but we're happy. <laughs> Any questions about the HubMap team before we move on to KPMP? Okay, Jonathan, do you want to quickly summarize KPMP? Are you still here? You're on mute. He's happily talking on mute. There he is. There we go. So uh, KPMP, Kidney Precision Medicine Project, is an NIH, NIDDK funded effort that's predominantly disease focused and it's focused not on rare diseases or monogenetic diseases necessarily, but the common kidney diseases that really affect the public health. And those are, um, they're really syndromes more than individual diseases. They're called chronic kidney disease and acute kidney injury. And they really reflect the fact that they're uh, lumping together a number of different uh, types of injury or types of disease processes affecting different cells in the kidney. And in general, we don't have very good therapies uh, for these uh, disease entities. So that's the goal, but the way to get to the goal is to create an atlas of the human kidney in health and disease, uh, with health being the reference to understand disease uh, better. And this, the primary strategy for KPMP is to obtain uh, research quality and uh, research directed kidney biopsy tissue from individuals with chronic kidney disease and acute kidney injury. And then uh, also engage these participants. These are altruistic people who are undergoing some risk for research purposes engage them longitudinally into a cohort study with um, uh, frequent uh, biosample collection and, uh, and tracking clinical outcomes over an extended period of time, anticipated to be about 10 to 15 years. So it's a very ambitious project. The kidney tissue that's obtained will undergo sort of standard histopathology, but also in a digitized fashion, uh, with uh, we've been working very hard coalescing nephropathologists together to define features that could be used eventually for uh, machine learning approaches as well. But then additionally, the tissue will undergo a variety of different types of tissue interrogation, uh, including some of what we've heard, uh, single cell RNA-seq, nuclear seq, spatial uh, metabolite profiling, spatial proteomic uh, profiling, eventually uh, codex and other immunohistochemical approaches, laser capture microdissection uh, to look at different uh, segments of the nephron and then some imaging approaches uh, to the tissue as well. Uh, and of course the challenge there is that the amount of tissue that comes from a biopsy is limited uh, to undergo uh, each of these types of uh, technologies. And then there's a data, uh, in addition to a data coordination center, there's a data visualization center which will uh, attempt to integrate all these data, first uh, uh, QC all these data, put them into a data lake and then a knowledge environment, and Becky is sort of a point person for a lot of this activity, make these data publicly available as soon as possible, as soon as the data is QC'd and curated uh, uh, for a community to be able to work with these data to hopefully come up with new targets and new therapeutics uh, directed at these uh, types of kidney disease. Thanks, Jonathan. Any questions? And Jonathan, maybe the reference af uh, aspects of KPI. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, the reference aspects are very important. Uh, and so, um, 
there are at the moment three different types of tissues or three different centers, I should say, that will be providing reference tissue, two of which are living donor uh, biopsy, one of which is um, so tissue that will be obtained surgically when, uh, the, when patients have kidney stones and are undergoing a surgical procedure to remove kidney stones. So the living donor biopsies will be pretty comparable because they're really out of the cortex of the kidney uh, to uh, the uh, biopsies uh, in disease states. And one of our challenges is that in percutaneous kidney biopsies, they're almost always from the lower pole and you're, you're aiming for the cortex of the kidney. So from that common coordinate framework uh, perspective, we won't have there'll be a lot of, there won't be much heterogeneity in terms of where our tissue comes from. The living donor biopsies are similarly cortical biopsies. The kidney stone surgery will uh, obtain deeper uh, segments uh, of the kidney. And it's worth mentioning, it was already mentioned with HubMap, but um, uh, two groups from HubMap uh, obtained glue grants uh, uh, to come essentially come into KPMP and become partners in KPMP as well. So as HubMap kidney efforts are getting very closely linked uh, with KPMP. That's the uh, Caprioli, Mark DeCasker, and Jeff Spragan's group from Vanderbilt with their near spatial resolution uh, proteomics. Uh, and then uh, Caddy Borner and uh, Bruce and uh, Ellen Atal from uh, Indiana. Uh, with uh, sort of the anatomic common coordinate framework uh, approach. So we are really trying to harmonize HubMap and KPMP early on. And then there are overlaps with uh, the human cell atlas as well. And it's probably worth pointing out too that Sanjay Jain and Kunzang are part of uh, KPMP uh, just as they are uh, 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 in these other consortia as well. And you find the we have a role in HCA, so we really are, you know, trying to connect the dots between these three efforts. Yeah. And along those lines, the ontology framework, as John has mentioned in the main session, I think is a critical feature which might really be of interest also for other organ systems. How early on we were very fortunate to have key leaders from OBO, both from clinical uh, anatomical uh, ontologies engaging with KPMP and helping us to understand how to establish a framework uh, to link the multiple scalar data sets inside uh, KPMP and in the kidney, but also these larger frameworks. And I think this is obviously a discussion point for this afternoon, uh, where I hope well, somebody from KPMP will bring their effort forward. Any other questions for KPMP? And I think I, yep. this might be a good time to do the break. We were suggested to break. I, or, I mean, if you want, you can try to pound through good map and RBK first. I know the we've already passed the break time that the KaiStorm app warned us about. <laughs> so we could break or we could punch through and then join some of the other sessions, which I really would love to do so that we don't silo ourselves because I think we can contribute and we can learn a lot from the cross-cutting sessions as well. What does the group feel? I guess one thing that I want to know is uh, what do we need to bring back from this group to the exactly. bank group? That's the uh, how might we? So these are the quest uh, 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 question sections down here and I think uh, there are a few obvious ones we already touched on, you know, how did we establish and obviously the cross links between the different consortia, how do we want to move forward with those, uh, what are key cross-cutting problems the different groups are trying to address together and how we set, how we, how have we set that up. And that would be so, such so thought. Deborah, yes, please. Yeah, so um, in terms of thinking about CROC, uh, which I love that acronym, I'm trying to figure out how I can use it in some of my meetings, but um, I, I think that one way of thinking about this is perhaps framing it around fair principles. And so if we start out with, you know, um, you know, the data needs to be, you need to be able to find data, access the data, it needs to be interoperable and reused. And so um, 
what has struck me is that I'm not so much concerned about ontologies. I am concerned, however, about control vocabulary to make sure that we're all using the same vocabulary, not only between data generating groups, but also now across the different organs. And so that means that that control vocabulary needs to be established, and it means that the annotation uh, needs to be done to, um, to to make the data findable across across organs. And that's where I think it's going to be very important that KPMP um, and and GoodMap that we are aligned with um, the AC uh, with the Human Cell Atlas and with HubMap. Um, and I know that we have started to do that in terms of, of the uh, control vocabulary workshop, but I think we need to re-emphasize that we really need um, uh, uh, individuals from those other efforts to be actively involved. So I think that that's one collaborative um, uh, uh, point that we, we, would, we would like to make. Um, in, in, in terms of interoperability, what has struck me in it, and I'm concerned is that are we all, the, our data files, are all our data files in the same format so that it's going, and so it, is everyone using a standard format, which means that it can easily go into various R packets or are we doing R um, to make sure that as people pull data sets, from the different consortia that all of those data sets are compatible with each other and therefore are going to be easy, therefore they're interoperable, but then it means that, that you can do rapid data analysis because everything is in the same format. And of course that then goes into the reusability aspect. So, so I think that one way of framing this would be to think of what aspects of FAIR principles are going to be necessary um, for to make sure that our efforts in our kidney focused consortiums are going to be compatible with what is going on with the with the other consortia that we have out there. So that's kind of my 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 two cents. Yes, thanks, Deborah. And I think there's a session on FAIR this afternoon as well. I think a lot of these cost cutting, cost organ cutting topics will be captured. So if you can define what are specific needs of this group towards the larger uh, framework and how we can ensure that uh, integration can flow both ways. So. And Deborah, do you want to give a quick uh, intro to the non-kidney people on the, on the call about GoodMap and RPK so that uh, you know, whoever sees their document in the future uh, gets a framework and what's available where? Yes, um, and so GoodMap is the um, molecular atlas of the developing kidney and lower urinary tract in mouse. Uh, and uh, five years ago, we started to incorporate um, human data, but you can imagine with the current um, political environment, it's bas basically impossible for us to get fetal tissue. So putting that aside, but we do have some fetal tissue data um, sitting in good map, which is, is I, I think, really quite striking. Um, and again, I think for good map, we have always had the issue of having data available upon validation. We don't worry upon publication. Um, the data is generated by a series of projects. And we really push for the consortiums to be interactive in the sense that um, the projects, everyone is viewed as a giant uh, lab group and each of the projects um, are, are really not only generating their own data, but also uh, interacting with other, the other projects so we can get so cross project um, projects going such as nano CT scanning of the entire lower urinary tract uh, plus the kidney. Uh, RBK is slightly different. The overall um, Social structure is very much the same as GoodMap. We have a series of projects and the expectation is everyone sharing as though you're in the same research group, the same um, research lab meeting. Again, data is made available prior to publication. Um, 
and the goals of rebuilding a kidney is to really start to establish what approaches might be best suited to actually think about can we actually rebuild a kidney or regenerate a kidney. None of the expectations said that these projects will go into clinical trials. We don't expect anything to be first in man, but rather to get a solid foundation of the different approaches which might be more, most um, um, feasible or most, most fruitful. For both GoodMap and RBK, we do address some of the same data presentations that I think um, uh, the other uh, consortia are facing. When you have single cell data, it's one thing to provide them as BAM and FASTQ files, but really, um, how do we make the, those data available to the larger community of perhaps folks who are not the power users, who don't have the bioinformatics person sitting next to them? Can we um, provide data presentations where we're looking at um, T-snake pods so it already generated? Can we do presentations of the data such that I can link in my gene of interest and then what pops out perhaps pre-populated uh, where my gene is expressed within the context of a T-SNE plot. Um, and so that's kind of a, a, a gist that, that we're doing both with um, GoodMap and RBK. Uh, any questions for Deborah? Uh, Deborah, this is Jonathan. I think that last point you made is a good one for us to bring back to the larger group. Um, because, you know, uh, for all of these different consortia, we don't, uh, well, it's not, you know, we're not defining who the stakeholders should be, but one could get the sense that the stakeholders should be larger communities, you know, not just single cell RNA-seq aficionados, um, but there are a lot of stakeholders for all the different kinds of efforts that are going on and making sure uh, that the data is accessible in, in terms of FAIR means accessible not just to power users, uh, but accessible to larger communities that care about that organ function or that disease process, whether it's cancer or whether it's kidney disease or whatever it is. So, you know, I think um, that focus is something that um, generates ongoing support for these kinds of biological uh, studies. So I think that's a point we might want to bring back to the larger group. Great. And then Sarah is listening in from the lung group. Sarah, what question would you have to the kidney group after you know seeing what we try to lay out here? Um, uh, hi. Yeah. This is uh, this is Sarah. I've, I'm from the lung map. I'm the NIHPO for uh, the lung group. Um, First of all, I want to thank uh, Deborah. Uh, we started to discuss the long map idea in <clears throat> 2012. And from that point, Deborah has been giving me a lot of support and advice. Um, and long map phase one started in 2014. And right now we are at the um, first year of long map phase two. Uh, so a little bit background long map, a long, long map is for developed developed lungs, um, lung map one will have both mouse and human um, mouse for the first couple of years and then we switch to human. And lung map two is entirely human and uh, both lung map one and two are focusing on normal development. Um, but for lung map two, we added 25% for pediatric lung disease. And also we extended the age from phase one is 10 years old to early adulthood, which we define as before 25 years old, which is the peak of lung function. Uh, so in addition to lung map, uh, NHLBI from last year also have a lung aging, <coughs> lung aging initiative, uh, but that's again for normal uh, non-diseased individuals. Uh, that's about 65 years old. Uh, in between that's hub map which is the normal adulthood lung um, atlas. So I hope with all these uh, three programs, we can cover the entire spectrum um, in life for lung health. Um, so I think some of the, why I'm here, <laughs> I think kidney, 
it's really um, an example of how to link all these different program common activities together. And we are facing uh, some of the common challenges and questions that you guys just dis discussed. For example, um, how to you know, make tissue available across centers um, to people, investigators within consortia and even beyond consortia. In LongMap, we have a tissue collection center based on Rochester. Gloria Prehuber, who you have talked to, or you have listened to yesterday, is the PI. Um, but some, you know, in general, her tissue quality is really good for different type of tissue, but occasionally we do have uh, issues like works differently among centers and from her hands to other people's hands. So I wonder how you guys would deal with the tissue uh, transfer between site, between the collection to the asset site. And secondly, again, we'll just talk about is the data uh, format, data quality, and how um, we can integrate all different <coughs> of OMAX, for, OMAX format um, data together and build an integrated knowledge base. Um, my third question would be how you uh, motivate the broader research community to come use our data generated by <coughs> this fibrous consortia that can benefit um, a greater uh, uh, research community. Um, so related to rebuilding a kidney, um, we also have a separate regeneration focus consortia. <coughs> um, Again, it's two phase. The first phase um, is, I think the name is PCBC, progenitor cell biology consortium. Now we're at the translation phase, PCTC, progenitor cell translation consortium. Um, the idea is how are we going to use the knowledge that we learn from <coughs> uh, model systems and normal regeneration towards a translational application to heart, lung, blood disease. So I think we're in a, a, in a lot of places a parallel effort with kidney. That's why I'm here. Hey, thanks a lot, Sarah, for that overview. And I think it's also very helpful to see how, you know, many of the structures are similar by, I suppose, design between Deborah and you. I think one question is relevant, you know, how to make tissue available across centers. And that's where I think KPMP, uh, the program staff went through a tremendous effort to establish uh, data use and <laughs> confidentiality agreement, which has been now implemented, I think, Jonathan, across 18 sites or so. <clears throat> and we actually uh, got permission to use the same data use and confidentiality agreement also for the data sharing inside the human cell atlas. So this is becoming an element which could facilitate a lot of the effort and in KPMP it took nearly two years to get consensus from the multiple stakeholders around that. And if this could become of interest, Sarah, to you or to somebody else on the group establishing a multi-site tissue distribution network in our hand, that really can be the single most lethal stumbling block for a network for several years. And if there's interest, uh, NIDDK has shared these uh, agreements with Human Cell Atlas in a slightly redacted format, and I think would also probably be amendable to do that with other networks if this could be of help for you. And well, then giving thumbs up here. Um, hate to be hate to be this guy, but we really should be okay. breaking, figuring, and then we're someday supposed to go back to the other group with something. I'm not sure what that is, so. <laughs> Oh, all right. Uh, how long are we breaking until? Yeah. One last point before we break. Um, you know, COVID-19, thinking about COVID-19 and lung map, or at least lung uh, atlas issues and kidney, uh, both are epithelia that uh, express ACE2, both are targets. It's becoming increasingly clear that the kidney is a target uh, in COVID-19 infections, and there's a lot of acute kidney injury in people with COVID-19 infections. So you can see where when you start talking about cross organs, um, uh, uh, making sure, and this gets to Deborah's uh, earlier point too, about 
uh, interoperable data between different organ systems as well is going to be very important for particularly, I think, for disease modeling. Thanks, Jonathan, absolutely. And really, uh, it's a time for all hands on deck here, obviously. Uh, what I did during the break, I took what we had up here. Can you see my screen? Yep. What, I, what Becky, in her masterful art, quickly aligned in the overview in the question sessions, I transferred to the final report template session down here, more or less what we defined uh, where the different networks are. And then I took the three main questions which we got uh, defined here and then started to put some of the answers we had discussed uh, down here. So. Uh, how can we use the same tissue with a master agreement that we have the nomenclature workshop, which is integrating across the different networks and the contact information. Jonathan, I hope Stephanie is okay if I just give that link. If somebody wants to join that group, seeing their document, uh, then can contact her and see where we are with the ongoing effort in that context. Is that agreeable to you? And then, yeah. And then any other topics you want to list down here before we sign off and go to the parallel sessions? I think something about sharing data, how that will be done. It's not clear to me because I'm not in the consortia formally, but it's not just the permission, but I think it was sort of discussed previously with what Alan said, but how, how, will, the, how will it be? Where will it be stored? Where will it be shared? How will it be shared? What will be? What processes will you put in place? How? I think there's more to discuss there that we haven't. We don't. We, I don't know what's happening with that and how it will go. Yeah, I agree. And this obviously is where you know each network has different constraints, starting from the informed consent, what is allowed to be shared, up to you know how we uh, annotate data and moving forward. Yes. Yeah? So, oh, data generation, you see I'm by far not as effective as Becky is. And, uh, and data releases and frameworks. Yeah. I would say coordination too. Yeah. 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 So I think that's sort of an unsolved challenge. I mean, within each consortia, you know, within Kidney Precision Medicine Project, we really do have a plan uh, using portals on our website to share data. We've developed uh, persona and use cases for different types of users of the data and are developing tools that will allow different kinds of data users to use the data. Uh, but we haven't worked that out <clears throat> between uh, HubMap and HCA and Kidney Precision Medicine Project. And that's obviously going to be a big challenge for a whole host of reasons. So uh, I think that's a, th this is one of the remaining large challenges. It's one thing to make data <laughs> theoretically interoperable, um, but it's another thing uh, when these consortia have their own infrastructure uh, to then actually uh, make those kinds of data uh, interoperable between even three networks. Well, I think um, in HubMap, uh, Jonathan Silverstein's group um, would be able to speak in large part to um, some of that for HubMap. Excellent. Anything else for these documents that we want to have? Obviously, this will be the document by understanding is by the end of the meeting will be posted and will be public public facing. Yeah. The, the one other thing, Matthias, we might want to add between these three consortia, it's still aspirational, but is to have some of the same tissue, kidney tissue, yeah. circulate amongst the three consortia for various kinds of uh, uh, analytical assays uh, so that you can calibrate better results. First of all, it's great for QC for each of the tissue technologies, 
but also for calibrating how to interpret the data that's uh, coming from one consortia versus another consortium. Again, that's these are to be uh, determined. These aren't uh, completely worked out, but that's an aspirational goal, I would say, of the interactions between these three consortia when it relates to the kidney. And that was discussed in our common vocabulary workshop a month or two ago uh, amongst uh, the the, stake, the kidney stakeholders in the three consortia. So Jonathan, question about that. Um, so HubMap is currently doing a common project where all the tissue mapping centers are sharing a tissue, uh, pieces from the same tissue and kind of doing the same sort of thing what you just suggested amongst consortia. Are you guys also doing that amongst your tissue, what your equivalent <laughs> tissue mapping centers are? Actually, Alan, that's exactly the plan to do up on Human Cell Atlas, HubMap, and KPMT, and Sanjay, and <coughs> myself, and Joshua are trying to define the framework. We actually have tissue sources already identified. It's the uh, NTAs, uh, CDAs, which are currently the main stumbling block, which uh, we are working on. And you know, in human cell, this is an international network with sites obviously present in Europe and uh, and Southeast Asia. So this will be a heavy lifting. But at least you now, the common BUAs, NTAs are currently being shared and are looked at by the various entities to accept tissue coming from that source. With uh, hub maps, a unique feature is that you with a CCF which is not routinely done by the other framework, the other networks where this is a unique framework and several of the procurement protocols are actually not easily amended to establish the CCF you are using in HubMap. So that might be one of the uh, you know, aspects where uh, the shared activity might not be fully integrated in some of the other ongoing networks. Yeah. And within KPMP, we are attempting at the level of data integration and data visualization to do the same where our biopsy tissues or our reference tissues, pieces of the same tissue are going to multiple different sites for, let's say, you know, the easiest one to cross compare is the single cell RNA-seq and nuclear seq. To look for where there are commonalities, where there are differences and whether those differences when they exist are technical, uh, or uh, biological um, to the extent possible by correlating results across different kinds of uh, analyses, including looking at relationship between um, transcriptional profiles and protein and metabolite expression in the same cells. So that's all within KPMP, and that's still somewhat aspirational, but we are beginning to make some progress there, with, particularly with our pilot uh, tumor nephrectomy uh, tissue. Um, so within consortia, we're trying to do that and between consortia as well to the extent possible. For HubMap, um, one of the leads on uh, dealing with all of the uh, common project for tissue distribution to different institutions was Shin Lin from University of Washington. I don't know if you have any um, knowledge of him at all. No. That's, the, that's the beauty of these big universities is that somebody can be at your own institution and you hear about them from a call like this. <laughs> well, he really did some heavy hitting for HubMap. Um, Shinlin's primary organ is heart, uh, but he uh, has really been uh, a champion for dealing with all of the paperwork and uh, data um, user agreement uh, and materials uh, transfer agreement uh, work for HubMap. Um, so he may be a good resource to just sort of uh, look at some of the footwork he has already done for HubMap, for instance. Yeah, that's great. I will look him up. S-H-I-N-L-I-N? Yes. And I believe he's at University of Washington. The uh, TMC that he's part of is Caltech and University of Washington. So it's going to be one of those two. <laughs> oh, I bet I, I bet he's in Jay Shandori's group. Yes, yes. Yeah, okay, I can find him. Excellent. Okay, anything else for this document? Otherwise, we could sign off and join the parallel groups. I would just add 
the, the last thing you talked about, the correlation of data sets generated from the reference tissue, that's that's sort of what our project is trying to do. So probably we should stay in touch on that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah.